Hi, my name is Jenny Swancha. I'm a product engineer at Intesis, and today we will go through how to set up our Modbus to OCPP gateway. This gateway allows you to integrate electric vehicles charging points based in OCPP 1.6 with any Modbus RTU or TCP controller, or connect the charger to an external OCPP central system and monitor them via Modbus. The OCPP gateway is slightly different to the rest of our portfolio, as it requires that you actively answer to the charger request and you will have to set multiple registers at the times for this. Normally, all this is set at the BMS site. You will find all the details on the steps and registers of each operation at the configuration manual here on our website. You will see all the steps, the registers that you need to follow to start a transaction or stop a transaction and, and many others. In this video, we will work on a demo where the BMS will be the central system. We will go to how to set up the gateway from maps, see the setup of a charger from its configuration page, how to find the charger and its connectors and add them to a project, review the connection to the charger, authorize a charging transaction, and our new feature, how to configure a smart charging operation where you can set up the output of a specific connector or the whole charger to meet your building power needs for things like load balancing. So let's begin. We are here in Maps. You will find the template for the Modbus to OCPP. Just open this app. It will take you to the general configuration. It comes by default with DHCP. You can just choose the settings that adjust to your installation. In my case, I'm going to put the, this gateway in 192.168.119. Just have in mind that your charger will need to be within the network. This all will be dependent of, of how you have your the setup on your installation. Once you have this uh, with the correct IP address, if you have any Modbus settings, you can here choose in between RTU, TCP, or both. Uh, how the order is in your registers. Big Indian is the default, and, and if you don't know it, um, you should find this in your BMS manual or instructions, but you can always go with the default values. That's always a good place to start. And if you are working in RTU, then you can you need to set up all the parameters according to your BMS. Once you have that ready, you will come to the connection tab and find the gateway. It will this one already has the 119. I just want to make sure the project I'm gonna load has it. and hit in connect. The password by default is admin, but it depends if the project had anything already loaded. Once you are connected, it will show in blue here at the bottom. At this moment, you also see that there is a little star here because I changed the settings. I need to if if this gateway didn't have the proper IP, I will need to send all these parameters or any Modbus slave or OCPP configuration in the OCPP. Um, I don't. I'm not going to put the charger yet. 
I'm just going to send this through. The gateway. And it's going to ask me for a password. This is just for security. They recommend that you just follow their recommendations here. You can put something like admin123. Admin123. And you still haven't sent. So your little star is still here. And you hit in send. It's going to ask you to save it. I have a, an already existing file, so I'm just going to override that. Once they, they have downloaded to the gateway, it disconnects. So it asks you to reconnect. You can use two methods. You can either hit the, this little thunder symbol here, uh, but it will need to wait until the get reboots after the download. So it's still not rebooting. The other option is to come back to connection and refresh. Once it's already again there, then you can send it. I, I'm going to need to adjust my password because it's not longer the default. And now I'm back online with my gateway and everything is updated because I have no thing. I have no signals yet because I haven't added or I removed the default charger that comes on the template. Now we're going to go to the charger setup. In this case, we are working with Circuitor. So to, every manufacturer will give you the instructions of how to access the configuration. In this case, is the IP address of the charger. We are interested in checking the um, OCPP parameters. So we'll go to the integrations tab for this particular charger. The menus of every charger will be different, so you need to console the specific manufacturer. And in um, here, they have a separate link for the JSON or OCPP configuration. Here, what we are more interested in is the central system URL. That's uh, the things that we need to change. So you come to OCPP settings if you need to adjust anything here. And central system is where you have the URL. So in this case, it needs to be WS, that is uh, stands by WebSocket, two points slash, the IP address of our gateway. This is the same one that we set up here on Maps, this same IP address. And um, two points, and the port that is used for OCPP is 9000 by default, but you can also change it on your OCPP settings. That's, that's the port that comes by default. And then a slash, the name of the charger. And in this case, we had set up this charger as charger one. That's also inside the um, charger settings. So if we wanted to change anything, we'll leave it there. Once uh, the charger had loaded that, it will give us the feedback that is finished. You may need to do some reboot to get those uh, changes through the charger. And we want to make sure, obviously, it's back up online so we can find it. Uh, 
Okay, now our charger is back. And double check the charger settings. Oh, and here also confirm the the name of the charger as charger one. So we will choose uh, to be a BMS central system. Here is where we have to authorize every transaction. If we have an external system, we will go through this um, option. Please notice one thing here. We'll have to put the central system parameters and the port of that external system. When you have that selected, you don't have option to select the smart charging because this will be done by the external central system. Uh, We'll keep it in BMS central system. We will um, leave this enabled for later on as we will go through these new features, smart charging operations. Uh, these uh, smart charging operations are there to help you with things like load balancing for your building. Maybe it's a peak hour and you want to reduce the current um, so you don't pay the more expensive tariff. Maybe you want to put uh, more power or current through at a point where it's cheaper or where you don't have a peak of, of current on, on your building. So let's start with the scan. Here is the reminder that we need to have done the setting on the charger. We already done that. And now we'll start to explore. We found the charger. We will add this charger. And that is now here. Um, so we haven't set that up. We will have all these signals enabled for our charger. And we just need to send it to the gateway. Okay, that's now complete. We'll have to, again, uh, double check if the gateway is back online. Once online, reconnect. And um, now we have here connection to the gateway. We can refresh and this will give us feedback as the make of the charger, the model, and other things. Now that we have communication with the charger, let's go through how to authorize a start and a stop a charging transaction. For this part, we will use the RFID tag and the connector to simulate a EV or electronic vehicle. This particular charger will show a green LED indicating that it's ready or available to be used. Here is the tricky part. If you are trying to do this manually, you need to be very quick. Otherwise, your charger may time out and you will need to start again. As we get the RFID tag next to it, the authorization flag will be set to 1, and the ID tag authorization will get the corresponding ID. We need to set the register authorization process to one after checking if this ID tag authorization is allowed in our charging point. This will be done in our BMS. You can see the authorization flag is clear, and now the LED feedback on the charger is blue, indicating that it's ready to charge your vehicle. We will then connect the plug, and the charger will set the Start transaction flag and all the registers associated with this transaction as the ID tag, connector ID, meter value, and timestamp. From the VMS, we will then set a transaction ID and set the start transaction process to one. This will automatically clear the start transaction flag. Again, remember to be quick. If doing it manually, is if it's done by the VMS, then all that will be automatic. Now we could see here that the status, current, and other energy values can confirm the charging of my electric vehicle had started 
and all energy parameters that are currently in use. To stop a transaction, we can pass the RFID tag once more, and this will set the stop transaction flag and its associated registers. ID tag, meter value, timestamp transaction ID, and reason. From the BMS, we will set the stop transaction process that in a similar way to our start transaction will automatically clear the stop transaction flag. You can now remove the plug and the charger will be available for the next user. Now we will be adjusting the charging power for this connector that is known as smart charging that allows to adjust the power provided by this charger at a specific point or set the schedules to help with load balancing or increase or reduce the electric vehicle charging according with your building name. We will again authorize a transaction after approaching the RFID tag as we did before using the same registers. We will now plug in the connector and process the start of the transaction once more. Just this time, we can assign a different transaction ID. Once the transaction had started, we can move to the smart charging registers. First, set the charger and connector ID. Then go to the profile ID, transaction ID, in this case, 135, that is the current transaction we just started. Set the stack level, the higher values take more precedence, and the profile purpose, we will use three that correspond to the transfer profile, as you can see here in the tooltips. Profile kind is three that corresponds to relative. After, we will set the charging rate unit to two that corresponds to amperes and send the charging schedule to one. Give a charging schedule period index. In this case, we will use one. The start period will set to zero, as we want to be valid from now, then limit to 10. In this case, the charger will now limit the current to 10 amps. Once you're happy with the setting, set the schedule period to one. As we are done with the required parameters, then we can set to one the charging profile to send to the charger. Here we have enabled the comms and the box so we can see the answer from the charger. As accepted, so yeah. Remember to follow our configuration guides for details and all the registers and different use cases. Happy smart charging.